All right, we are live. Let's just get people jumping in here. Um, so Tass, have you been as busy as, uh, has the busyness slowed down? Let's go that route. No. Thank you, Tass. You're the worst interviewee, I think, on the planet. No, man, things, are, I mean, things are, are, are heating up. I mean, it's getting busier and busier, but that's a good thing. I always say, I'd rather be busy than broke. That's me. Yeah. Not everybody thinks that way, though, do they? They absolutely do not. So listen, real sometimes the busy and sometimes the right? busy, sometimes the busy is on the wrong thing. Oh, I lost you. I don't I have audio. Here. Oh, there you go. I'm here. Uh, sometimes the busy is on the wrong thing. So like we get busy getting ready to get busy or we get busy doing, you know, cleaning the school or doing those things. And um, those things are important, but you know, we really got to be busy on the right things because when we're busy on the wrong things, it can be very frustrating because we're not seeing our school grow. And there's reasons for that because of where our focus is. <clears throat> we had a lot of talk about that this last week, haven't we? We sure have. Time management and efficiency. So, sure. so we have some guests today. And they've and been busy on the right things. They have been busy on the right things. And let me just pull up. Um, I just want to make sure that we're all good here. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So anyway, hello, Miss Geely. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning for some. So anyway, we got Mr. and Miss Collier that's going to come on. And uh, they are out of Utah. And it seems like people have been relating to some of the guests that have been on here and have been in their place. And I think it's always good when other martial arts school owners out there hear how people that may be or were in their position and what did they do to you know, improve their position. So we're gonna hear their story. And guys, look, I'd love to get questions too. So please, as we go and as we talk and chat, ask questions in the chat box. So let's bring in Mr. and Mrs. Collier from Utah. There they are. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? Fantastic. So is Welcome. this nerve wracking now that, now that, you know, our, our six viewers are, are watching it? <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we usually get a pretty good following here. But I, I wanted to ask you guys to come on. And Tassel and I have talked about, for years, we've talked about, you know, there's a lot of clients. There's a lot of people. And we, we just think that instead of just hearing us blab all the time, and maybe some people believe what we say, maybe some people don't, maybe some people can't relate because we've been doing this for, for 30 years. And it seems like, oh, I don't know how I'll ever get there. I can't relate to that. But I think it's good because uh, can you tell us, just tell us, first of all, tell me what, what, where you were at six years ago, five years ago, or whatever. When did you start your school? What style do you teach? Tell us a little bit about you guys. Um, so I actually started my school in my parents' basement as a 17-year-old kid. We had like a karate, like a workout room. And we just started teaching classes to, to neighbor kids. And it's just a hobby, really, because we really enjoyed um, martial arts, my brother and I. And uh, we ended up having like 30, 40 kids in the basement. It got to be where the city was telling us we couldn't have any more kids in the basement of our house because it was getting messy. And uh, a location opened up when I was about 21, uh, about 2,000 square feet. And... We thought, holy cow, we have enough kids. We could afford the rent. We can, we can do this. And we just started, and I did it kind of as a, a college job. And at first, I never really thought of running a martial arts school as a, as a full-time career. It was always just kind of a, a hobby. And um, you fast forward three or four years, and all of a sudden, I had like 140, 150 kids but I wasn't making any money. You know, I, I, we were paying all the bills. It paid for my cell phone, insurance, stuff like that. But we just, it, I didn't know anything about running a martial arts school. And um, as time went on, we got, we got a ton of students because we were 
I think doing a pretty good job of teaching classes and teaching a uh, karate was a style we teach. Um, and I get a job where I was working 40 hours. I was still going to school, trying to manage the, um, the, the studio and we got married and it just was this like hundred, 110 hour a week kind of disaster because I was working 40 hours. I was going to school like 20, trying to run the karate school 30 or 40 hours. And we got to a point where honestly, Heidi kind of said, you either have to make the karate school something or we got to just quit and shut it down. And uh, it was a decision we were, we were trying like, wrestling with because you know, I made, I made pretty good, good money as an engineer at that point. And then 2015 hit and I worked in the oil industry doing manufacturing engineering. And the price of oil went from $100 a barrel to like $5 a barrel overnight and destroyed the whole industry I was in. And that, that decision was kind of made for us. We went, you know, maybe we don't want to do the engineering thing anymore. And that happened to be the same year that uh, like a month later we were in the super show and that's when I met and spoke with you, Mr. Metzger. And what year, what year was that? Uh, 20, 2015, summer of 2015. So it's been okay. seven years. Okay. Uh, our karate school was, was grossing what, maybe 14 or 15,000 a month. If that. And it was just, you know, we, we thought oh, we, we need more students. We need more students, but, but then our, you need more staff. Yeah. We needed more staff. And so the, the, the profit didn't increase with more students. It just really kept upping our expenses. And we obviously just weren't running it right. We didn't, we didn't know. We didn't even, I don't know. We didn't know. We didn't know about running a martial arts school. And so. Um, and I kept saying, I wish there was someone that I could just pick their brain and ask them what to do. And I, and I said that for years before we found you guys. Yeah. Cause we'd been to the super show and you know, we'd heard, all the, the talks and discussions about you can run a successful school with a hundred students and make a good living. I'm sure I, it was probably one of the, the discussions that you guys gave even. And so I, I guess the real pivotal moment was finding a mentor that understood our industry. And within three months we went from making nothing, having just been laid off from my main employment. Well, hold on before you even go there, hold on. <laughs> Miss Collier, you wrote, you wrote something explaining the whole story, I remember. Um, and I don't know why you wrote it, I, or, or maybe it was from having the year last year. I don't know why, but share that. Share that. What did you write? Where were you exactly mentally? And where were you at that time? Um, basically, we were, well, he got laid off. And so then we had to go get on state assistance because I was pregnant I with our second child. And, and which is something I never wanted to ever have to do. We're pretty independent people. And, and I hated that. And so we, and he, Caleb called me from the super show because I was nine months pregnant. And I, so I couldn't go with him. And he said, hey, I'm going to hire this guy to help us with our business. And I'm like, you're crazy. You can't even pay us a paycheck. So, hold on. so at that point, you weren't even really taking a paycheck? No, we no. didn't take home any paychecks. It only covered like insurance stuff, like the insurance, basics. our phone and some gas mm -hmm. and, and meals. We eat out sometimes. Like and how, many, how many students did you have at that time when you're grossing 14, 15 around? About 175. You think so? Yeah. It was like 150. Well, that's probably true. 175. We just. Uh. We needed some guidance. <laughs> All right, so you were on state assistance, you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, we filed for unemployment and I mean, Medicaid, and it was, it was awful. lovely. Now, were you were you even thinking? I don't know if we're going to be able to keep the school going at any point, or yes, yeah, I yeah. was like, um, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell the karate school because you can't work another job and try and run this the karate school at the same time and make a good living. It's just not going to work. You have to pick just, one or the other. It just wasn't working out. I mean, we never saw each other except for at the karate school. So, um, you know, we just had almost no relationship at that point. It was, I don't know. It was ugly. So that super show saved us that. But hold up, Mr. Collier, but hold on. So Mrs. Collier, you called and said, Hey, I'm going to hire this guy or we're going to, I'm going to, you know, hire them and, 
Mrs. Collier is saying, are you crazy? How are you going to do this? We don't even, how are we going to afford that? What were you thinking and how did you think you were going to afford it? Well, you and I had talked and, and honestly, I think I'd come to a sort of like a, a mass intro you guys did where it was uh, you know, just an explanation of like the A, B, C, and D program options and what Maya could do for us. And we had sat through like a two hour class with you guys and what you said just made sense. You know, we weren't charging the right way. Our class schedule wasn't set up the right way. And I guess I saw kind of the vision of what you guys were, were able to do for other school owners. And, you know, I just kind of did the math. Hey, we have, you know, 170 students. If we were doing it this way, we would be able to make a, a pretty good living. And it would honestly replace our income really quickly. So you, you then tell her, I just have this vision and I believe this guy who just sold me. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I don't know. The thing she likes least about me is when I, when I want to do something, I just go and do it. I, we, we attack things maybe a little faster sometimes than we even should, but I, I don't like to hyper analyze stuff. I don't think it's healthy. Okay. So, okay. So you're at the super show, you're on state assistance, you're on unemployment, you're on the verge of maybe we're going to close the school. You call uh, Mrs. Collier, who was pregnant at the time and say, Hey, I'm going to hire this guy. Cause I think he can help. <laughs> and so what happened then in the next 90 days? So um, within 90 days, so you, you made me a promise. You said it's going to be a thousand dollars a month. I think at the time and I can, I can help you earn that $12,000 back in the next 90 days. And 12,000 being a thousand a month for a year. Yeah, a thousand a month for 12 months. You said, I can, I can help you earn the whole year's worth of consulting back in the next 90 days. And I actually think by the end of 60, we had, we had earned another $12,000 and have been able to pay ourselves a paycheck ever since. So it didn't take years. Of, it just took four or five really simple, but profound changes to the way we ran our business to make a huge difference. I can't believe you fell for that line. I know. <laughs> I, it, it, hey, it works. I can't believe it takes Metzger 90 days to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mass can do it in, in 30. That's right. That's right. There we go. All, All right. right. So, okay. So you were, when you came to the super show, you were around 14, 15 grand a month. Yep. Okay. With 170 students, like first yeah, of our, all, I always, I always chuckle at this because like you're one of those, like, and we can help everybody. We've had people with three students at gymnasium have a commercial school with a hundred students plus in a year. Right. But, but you're like, you're in, in that sweet spot, which is like, we can have this just like profound impact. Yeah. And by the way, it's profound whether you have 50 students or you have 150 or 170, but it's like when you invest a thousand dollars and you get, you know, a hundred dollars in return or you invest a hundred thousand and get ten thousand. The returns are the same return, but they seem bigger, right? And yeah. you had the you had the, the base of the infrastructure to be able to uh, to really make a difference fast in your school. And what I love about this, because you're pulling on my heartstrings a little bit, because you guys were acting from a place of really desperation. I mean, there was inspiration. I think that maybe came from Metzger about how you could fix things. But I, I, that's the exact place that I was in my life when yeah. I made the decision. And and I don't ever want anyone to have to make a decision when, when they're at their lowest point. And sometimes it takes us to get to that point to make those decisions. But then they, like in your case, I mean, we'll talk more about this, but those decisions that we make in that split second become life-changing and, and literally change the trajectory of our life forever. So, so... Do you remember what you grossed that year, the year before the Super Show, or no? Um, yeah, it was like 178 or something like that, 182, somewhere in there. All right, so you grossed around 180 grand for the year. That was the gross. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just for everybody watching, because not everybody has the focus, right? So people will jump in, jump out. Let's fill in the blanks this way, but... Would you mind sharing what you grossed last year? Yeah, so we did um, 1.25 million. So from 180 grand to 1.25 million in yeah. seven years. Yeah. And here's the thing everybody wonders. Did you sell your soul to the devil? No. No, <laughs> honestly, it, 
I would say our classes are better. Our, our kids progress better. They're better martial artists. Um, the life skills we teach are, are, are more well-rounded. They get, I don't know, the, the experience overall is better in every way for our students. And for our staff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and the thing is, is I put a post up to pass. I don't know if you saw this, but we put a post up that said, for the, who, who wants to grow your business? Basically something like this, who wants to grow your business and why? Like, why do you want to grow it, right? I don't know if you guys saw that post that was out there. And you see all the answers. If you go and look at the post, you'll see all these things. So Mr. and Mrs. Collier, where the frustration comes in, and Tassel and I, I'm just going to be transparent with everybody watching. The frustration comes in because I've been consulting and trying to help schools for basically 20 years, right? And I just told Tass this a half an hour ago. I've always been so conscious on not to sell you know, like in these forms. Now, if you come to a seminar or something, we'll we'll try to sell a program and we'll tell you. But at the end of the day, again, you're just another person that that is living proof that we could help these school owners. And I told Tass, I'm done being like trying not just to, to try to sell something because, like you said, you came there, you called it a mass intro in Vegas. Yeah, I don't know what you guys called it, but. Yeah. A good sales job. No. <laughs> kidding. My point is, is what do you do and what would you say to school owners that say, okay, it's that Mets task guy again. They're just trying to sell. They're just trying to sell because you know most people don't want to take the leap of faith or they're skeptical or they think that we're just trying to sell them so we can make money off of them. That's what a lot of people think. And it's frustrating because you guys know – that we can help people, you know, we can yeah. help the school owners. Well, everybody that commented that I want to grow my business and it's because I saw people say, I want to live in the mountains. I want to provide for my staff. I want a vacation more. I want to, whatever it is. I just want to put in there, well, guys, call me. I can yeah. make that happen, just call me. We could do it. But what would you say to these school owners understanding the skepticism? Well, I just think, I think sometimes as martial arts instructors, we're used to being the one who, you know, kind of like knows everything in our schools. And for me, it, I, I didn't know anything about running a martial arts school. Just because I knew how to teach martial arts or knew how to do martial arts does not mean I understand that industry and how to run that business successfully. And uh, you've said it a dozen times, it's not just that you run your business, but you get to talk to hundreds and hundreds of school owners and see what all of these people do well and you get to take all of those awesome ideas and incorporate them into a, a just a better business plan and uh what would i say to them i you know maybe check your ego a little bit and and just be open-minded i mean we're all supposed to be students first you know if we're going to be good martial artists and i think that doubly applies to the business because you know it's not like we all have business degrees and understand how to you know, run a successful company. I think learning is, is something we should always be open to. And I, 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 I don't know. I come to some of the seminars, I come to the super show and I hear people, you know, just sit in the back going, oh, that's not going to work for us or that's not, you know, try it, you know? <laughs> well, let me ask this. You said you're, you're, you jump, but Mrs. Collier, you said, are you crazy? What were you thinking when he said, well, this is what we did. And what would you say to the school owners? What were you thinking? Because if you were the one at the super show and he was home, you may not have joined, right? Uh, possibly. I'm not sure. I was excited. I was nervous. But he was like, look, he's promised that we will make back everything. That's what I used to Honestly. sell it. Sorry. <laughs> he promised me. But he promised. Yeah. And it at that point, I was like, well, what, what do we have to lose at this point? Like, we don't have, yeah. where are we supposed to go from here? So we might as well jump in. And if it doesn't work, we'll just go from there. Okay. Okay. So, I yeah, I, I think these stories can help cast. Do you have questions as far as you were in the same boat? I mean, this story has to resonate with people, right? And I think, you know, I'm just, I was just making some notes on some things that they were saying, but, you know, Mr. Collier, you just said one of the things that Mrs. Collier sometimes doesn't like is that you dive in and you just go after it, right? 
But in her defense, she is super supportive. She's awesome. <laughs> she doesn't mind when you dive in and do the house stuff that you've been doing all those sure. like so, right? <laughs> um, but I think about, you know, I'm, I'm listening to you talk and I'm like, well, what's the common denominator for people that were where they were and where they are now? And I think, you know, the things that Met said that, you, that resonate with me is I was in a place of desperation. I was in a place where I just trusted him and said, all right, this is my last ditch effort. I'm just going to do whatever he tells me to do. And I dove in and I just did it. You said you shouldn't really overanalyze, I think is what you said. Yeah. You're not the kind of guy that really likes to overanalyze because you, you, just, you can get caught up in that, right? I didn't overanalyze. I just went out and I executed. And yeah. at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're in Vegas. Your wife's at home about ready to deliver your child. You have no idea how you're going to feed your kid or put diapers on because you don't have that. <laughs> but you pull the trigger to make a decision that you thought was going to you know, impact your life for the better. And I think that's the other part is, is it's, a, it's all about pulling triggers as well. And yeah. so those are like some of the common denominators of success because sometimes people will watch this and they'll say, well, they're different. Well, they're not different. No. You're, you're not different. Where you may be different is – you're willing to dive in. You're willing to check the ego. You're willing to always learn. You're willing to execute. You're willing to pull triggers where some people can have all the same information but not do any of those things and not have that level of success. But they have all the information at their fingertips. And we see that happen. And that's part of the frustration that when Metzger talks, that's part of the frustration that we have. Because at the end of the day, I don't know if you stroked the check to Metzger for a bunch of money this last year because you guys, you guys did so much better, but I don't think that's the case, right? I'm sure um, people have appreciated that. We, we, uh, <laughs> we right? We don't. We yeah. whether you 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 know to do phenomenal or you close your business, right? And I don't know if we've closed any one of the businesses, but whether you do phenomenal or not, we don't get any extra for that. So yeah. it's it's not it, our vested interest is we love these stories, and this is where it, it, this this is what's fun for us. So I just think people, you know, regardless of where you're at, and there's lots of different stories and lots of different people that you may resonate with. Um, but Collier's, you're teaching out of a basement and it's just, I mean, and then you go to your martial arts school and you're, you're not, you know, you're bringing in some gross revenue, your student values, sub a hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. And all these things are happening and then you transform. And if people really look, I mean, basically 60 months, 72 months. I mean, that's not a long time to go from no. where you were to where you are today. And, and I always said, I wish I would have found Maya when I was 21 or 20 when I opened yeah. my old school because I'd be retired. Yeah. But I, or either that or I would just be, doing it, you know, be, because I just want to keep giving back and I love to do it, right? Um, because the, 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 the difference that it made for us was unbelievable in our school. So, yeah, some very, very – these are qualities. You guys have the success because you have the qualities of successful people. And you're willing to just go execute and implement. So congratulations. I just, I love hearing the stories, man. I think it's great. So, so just some questions real quick. So you guys are 100% karate? Um, I studied Taekwondo for like three years and then switched to a, a school that ended up being closer to my home as a teenager that, that taught karate. So um, I have backgrounds in both. What we do is, is mainly karate. Um, I have instructors now that train in jujitsu, study Krav Maga. I don't I don't know. We, we, we incorporate a mix of stuff, but our, we, we give them black belts in karate. Yeah. Okay. And also, so then they said, well, one location, single location. So when you started, you had one location. Yes. Um, do you want me to just go for that? One? Go ahead. Talk about <laughs> so, it. So uh, I, I assume that was, they were wondering if I made that much money in one location. And um, we, we opened a second location in March of 2021. So March of last year, our first location did like nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars last year, and our, so our new location. Minute. So your one location did like nine hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. Okay. You opened a new location in March. In March, and by the end of the year, they were at like two hundred and thirty-one students, and they made three hundred and like fifteen that yeah, last year. Three fifteen. The exact numbers. So um, it grew like crazy. It just exploded. Um, but the bulk of the revenue was made by the first school. And what are we doing right now? <laughs> um, that 
That second location is clear up to 260 students. 50. 250, 250 students. And we just signed a lease for a third location. So <laughs> we're going for it. We're crazy. Well, and by the way, there's a right way and a wrong way in, on when to open a second location. I don't yes. remember exactly, but did I put the brakes on that a little bit when you were yes, first looking? You did. Yeah, no, not that. He never does that. <laughs> about 10 times. You told me, no, you're not ready. No, you're not ready. So. And we weren't, we weren't ready. I remember honestly. going to one of the seminars and getting all excited. I'm like, okay, we're ready. And you looked at me and you said, no. Nope. And yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> dang it. Yeah, no, we weren't. We didn't have enough staff. We weren't prepared. Um, but it's, it's been awesome now. And honestly, I think that's why we grow so well is we have amazing staff members. That yes. it's, not, it's not like we go and do all of this. Uh, hiring people and, and, and taking care of them is probably the most important thing that we do. But that's the thing. Think about that, right? Because as martial arts instructors, owners, whatever, um, especially if we're struggling, our, our main focus is I want to help my students. I want to impact more students. I want to help the community, right? I believe in what I do. And and now look, you're, you're helping so many more students, but also helping those students that have now become instructors potentially. Yeah. And you're doing more than just teach those people life skills. You're providing them a true career. Yeah, that that for me now as a business owner is probably the most exciting part is seeing uh, my, my, my first student ever in the basement of my parents' house is now the head instructor of my first location. And he just bought his first house. He has two uh, beautiful children. It, it's amazing to see him now as a 27-year-old um, being able to um, accomplish his, his life goals. I, it, that's my favorite part, honestly. By the way, more than you were making when you owned the right. school. I was gonna say and, and making more, yeah, making more money than I did for the first 10 years of running the business. So. That's what I was just going to say, Tass. You know, like everybody puts these titles or importance to titles, and it's not about that. It, it doesn't matter. We're all in the same boat, right? I mean, we all need yeah. each other, and all it means is you're the one who took a leap of faith, took a big risk, risk to everything, right, by doing this. And, and now the only way we know how to teach people is, and you know this, is we got to take care of our people. Yeah. First and foremost, we got to take care of our people. And we got to make sure that the quality of our product or service is at 100%. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I'm maybe too picky about things, you know, bathrooms being clean and how it smells in the school and stuff. I annoy my instructors, but... Just that quality is, is super important. So a question for any of us here. How do you find quality staff who have administrative clerical skills to help run or grow the business, not just teach class? That's an interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> Be, and, and you guys can answer that. But my, my look like that's the, for me, that's the easy part. The, the other part of it is find people with the martial arts skills to be able to be instructors. That Those are harder people to find. Yes. But go ahead, you guys. I mean, um, find them. I, I think we've been, we've been really lucky. I think our program has just happened to attract some, some of our awesome parents. And um, our office manager is one of our um, black belts, but she's a, she's a mom. She's been with us for 10 been years. Been with us for about 10 years. And she helps us manage you know, the office stuff. And we just, we just started small cause it was a part-time job at first and she's been growing and now she's the director of operations for our school. She does all the ordering, the I don't administrative stuff. I, I don't know. I think that's a culture thing, isn't it? Attracting the right people, making it a, a fun, exciting, enjoyable environment to be in. Can you see Sometimes. this? This is the elite seminar schedule of speakers that's coming up in two weeks. And where my finger is, talent versus culture. What's more valuable? That's going to be a whole topic I'm going to be speaking on. And you said it. It's culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so important. So the way you do that is you you got to give um, constant training and provide the tools. I mean, that's the answer. I mean, it's not about finding them. It's about finding the right person and then building them and yeah. molding them and training them and providing the right tools. So, um, so 
you guys, again, for those of you who just jumped on, you were on state assistance, you were unemployed, you were collecting unemployment, you got laid off, you decided to jump into Maya Leap. Back then when you joined, there was no such thing as any other Maya foundations or Maya growth. It was like, and you said it, I'm just going to say it, but it was $1,000 a month. It wasn't like, I mean, Mr. Collier, as much as you wanted to jump and you said, hey, I trust this guy promised me he's going to change our lives. Were you scared? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. For sure. Um, I mean, we went from making $70,000 a year to making like 12000 a year, which was just a little bit the karate school could pay us. And we, we that $12,000 is what we paid to, to you and to Maya. And I mean... We only went two months before we could take a nice paycheck again. So I, yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I, I could say it a thousand times, but if, if someone's on the fence about this, geez, having a mentor, someone who has been doing this and understands how to make money here and make your business better. It's not just about the money. Our, our classes are better. Our, our students yes. are better black belts. You know, they're happier. Uh, I don't know. Could so Mrs. Collier, what were you going to say? Um, I, Honestly, like I, I always say I don't have a, a testimony of college and because I don't think that college really helped me, but I feel like this is my education. Like I am putting money into my education with you guys. And so I, instead of going and getting my education at a university for business, this is more specific. more specific to what I need and what we need to grow our business and our family. Right. And how much in, in, in school loans do you have with us? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice to say we're debt free. <laughs> right. Well, Cass, you said it. I want to bring it up because of what tying all this in together for anybody here watching. Mr. Collier said he was scared. We already know Mrs. Collier said, are you crazy? We can't, we're not even paying ourselves. Why would you commit to this? And he also said he, he was scared, but he, he sometimes, he doesn't like to analyze. He jumps and he just goes and he takes action. And Tash, you say it all the time. You got to be an action taker, right? I mean, and, and if it doesn't work for somebody, uh, it means there, it, it, we know today because of data, it's because they didn't take action. I mean, we know that. I mean, it, it's been too consistent. And Tass, where are you at today with consulting? Why don't you share what you tell people when they reach out and say, okay, I want to get consulting. The, yeah, I'll give you the, the, the G version of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, listen, I, I mean, the, the, the conversation's pretty candid. I mean, I find out where they're at. I find out where they want to go, um, kind of get a feel for, for, for you know, how they're going to be as a client. Um, because I'll be honest with you right now. I just, I don't, I have, I have plenty of clients. My life is busy, but I want to be busy in the right way. Just like we talked about the beginning of this call. I don't want my busy being spent on things that aren't productive. And when I have a client that's not going to be productive, I don't want the client. So I don't, I was, I'll just say it. I just tell people if you're an ass dragger, I'm not your guy because there's the, the, the biggest the biggest compliment that you can give the consultant and by the way in turn help yourself is by being an action taker and executing and that's how everyone that's how you're going to win in this game because i'm going to get frustrated because i know what you can accomplish because you haven't been down that road before i have and i've seen the success of others and it's not me saying that of course that i'm better and i know all the stuff it's just i happen to know the systems i'm just the conduit to deliver it but when the, the person doesn't want to receive it and then go take action, it's just not someone I want to work with because it typically it's like a student sometimes in your school, right? Sometimes the students in your school that, that, that can be the biggest challenge to you are sometimes, well, this is a bad example. They're the low, sometimes the lowest paying students. I'm not saying that's everybody, right? But sometimes what happens is if not money wise, but if you have someone that doesn't have the right mindset, or they don't have an open mind. They think they're willing to move forward, but they, they question everything with answers to, and the answers make perfect sense. But then you get up, and what Mr. Collier said, you get caught up in the analyzing things, and you just don't take action. Yeah. There's frustration on everyone's part. And so I, I personally today like to deal with people that want to roll up their sleeves, get busy, dig in, and let's execute. I want to find more people like what I did, like what you guys did, right? 
July Super Show, I came back at everything implemented by September, and we did an extra hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the, in, the, in the next twelve months. And the next year it was another hundred and forty thousand on top of that. I mean, we grew by well over six figures year after year after year, and it didn't come from being a information junkie and going to all the different seminars and trying to pick and pull what I like or what fit my personality. It was, here's what I need to do. And Tony Robbins says, it. you're going to do something either for pain or pleasure. And unfortunately, most of us will do more to avoid pain than we will to seek pleasure. And which is why you guys did what you did, which is what I did, what I did. But for a lot of us watching, you may not be in a painful situation, but I would encourage you to find what that pain is because the pain may be you're in a full-time job and your school's doing okay. And you're like, I'm fine. Well, if you really want to get, not that you can't do both, but if you really yeah. want to get out of your full-time job and get to your martial arts school, then find what that pain is and push the button hard so it causes you to take action and get yourself to the next level. Because too many of us are just, we're just getting by. Sometimes we feast, sometimes we famine and we go, we do this. It's like, yeah, it's okay. And we're fine. And we're just living this okay life. And at the end of the day, we're all martial artists. But this is a conversation about the business side of things. And when you generate revenue, you have more options, not just more options for you, but for staff, for the looks of your school, the mats you buy, and what school, the locations you're in, all of those things start opening up. So, I mean, that's the long answer. But yes, I, I, I like working with clients and I, I just won't work with a client if I don't think they're going to be a good fit and, and take action, which I think a lot of us do in the martial arts school. I mean, we're not going to work with someone if we think they're going to be you know, just a really, really difficult to work with, right? We're just yeah. going to pass on. and move. Now, some of us will do that if we're desperate for students, right? Because we're like, we just need somebody on the floor. That's just not the place that we're at. We're in the business of changing lives, but that takes two. It takes two people. It takes one to get the information. It takes the other one to execute the information. And that's where these success stories come from. That's where it's so much fun. Hey, let me ask you, have you guys ever, prior to Maya, have you ever done any other consulting with anyone else? Um, we looked at, I, we looked at it in a couple of their super shows. No, you don't have to mention names. I'm just, yeah. So have you ever done any? Yeah. Yeah. I did. looked at some other people, uh, mm, didn't, didn't love it. So, well, listen, you didn't know Maya from Adam, right? No. What was it that made you jump and trust Maya, let's say, or me, if you talk to me, as opposed to anyone else because that's the other thing all these people watching they're being inundated with and by the way i think there's good consultants out there but why why maya go ahead mrs Collier. you had a thought <laughs> yeah, yeah so i remember him calling me and saying okay you have to like i just went to this really cool seminar and this mr metzger guy he just went through all these details of how you charge for programs and the business systems behind it. And it just makes sense to me. Like all of it just lines up. And I really think that we could implement these things and go for it. I, I guess um, I'd listen to some of the others, these other people. And instead of telling me the, like the specifics of how it was this vague, oh, I'll, I'll send you this whole pile of stuff and you're going to sift through it. And that's not how it worked with you guys. You gave me a one-on-one -on -one phone call where you discussed my needs, my concerns, my specific situation, and you tailored the systems you knew worked to my situation where the other ones, it was, Oh yeah, every week you're going to get an email and, and here's a spreadsheet and here's this training video and that's all fine. But you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about me. I was just, I felt like I was a number, I guess. I was just another customer, another uh, person paying them five hundred dollars a month or whatever. So I, I think it's different in Maya, and um, I also own a little tiny construction company, and we've looked for a mentor, but it's the same thing. Oh yeah, you'll get on the email list, and you can get on the you know the Facebook Live videos, and that was all great, but there's no interpersonal interaction, and I, that's the difference for me with the Maya Elite stuff is. I mean, you call us every other week and you ask us our numbers and you ask us how everyone's doing. You know our name and, and you're able to specifically answer the questions that we need help with rather than it just being a, just start doing this thing, go. Right. 
Well, and, and, and I think, Tass, you've been with a lot of other consultants before you became a consultant. And uh, I think that was your experience with the, some of the people you were with, right? It was just generalized and it was yeah. like quickly, you know, like. Yeah, hundred hundred percent, and and that's exactly the difference. And when I saw, and and actually, I'll, I'll, let me just go back. But yeah, the answer is yes. But I remember when I first started consulting. Gosh, I think it's been maybe eleven, ten years ago now, something like that. Um, and Metzger would sit in the back, you know, like watching and listening. Well, he maybe wasn't listening, but he was watching and listening. He's like, Tass, you just, you got to get right to the point. Like, you got to give them bullet points to take away that they can go execute and implement in their school. And I'll never forget when he told me that. I'm like, okay, there was too much story time and not enough getting to the meat. Let's go, what can we do? And I see a lot of hyperbole. I see a lot of ideas and theories. I see a lot of one size fits all consulting where like you're saying, go do these things and that's what you need to do. But that's not what everybody needs in their school right now. Some people need to work on the retention. Some people need to work on their upgrade program. Some people need to work on enrollments. Some people, there's all different things. And the reason why we can be so successful and, and clients can be so successful is because we immediately can identify where those things are in your school attack those big holes first, get those plugged, and then move forward as opposed to just giving generalized consulting that you're going to be, you're going to get better. You'll, you'll do things better, but you're not going to maximize your success if we're not hitting those individual schools. So a hundred percent agreements and your transparency, by the way, I mean, don't, I'm going to say it. He'll probably not like me saying this, but I remember someone asking him, if they could have his license agreement for CMA. And I watched Metzger go, yeah, here you go. Just don't copy it word for word. Like who does that? Like who does that? And so the transparency and the honesty and the, like we're playing with all the cards on the table. We're not gonna give you this and hide this and everything is out. The details are there. The, the, the all the information is there, the specifics. I think that's the big, that was the big attraction to me way back when I was on as a client was I'm like, dang, this guy's just brutally honest and like he's willing to give me whatever and he's willing to help me and I haven't even paid the guy yet. And he's giving me specific things that we need to do. That key, was I think, the big attraction for me too. Key, key word there is brutally. <laughs> yeah. And it's just sometimes not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't have time, right? So it's just pretty straightforward. Some people appreciate it, some people don't. But uh, my mission and our mission as Maya, all the consultants, uh, our mission is simple. Make, make school owners as successful and, and as professional as they possibly can be for not only yeah. them and their communities, but for their staff and their people. Period. That's it. And I'm going to do that as quickly and as efficiently and as directly as I possibly can. And for those of you watching this, right? Um, you may say, well, what is this? One big infomercial for my elite? Yeah, let me just be <laughs> brutally on it. Yes, yep. it is. Because yeah, this, sure. is here. this is the year, and I said it earlier. I know what we can do for you, for school owners. I know what we can do. And now I'm putting it out there, and I'm bringing you guys on. I'm bringing stories on because everybody watching this has been where, where you were, or they are currently where you were, and they've been there for years and years and years. Maybe not, by the way, even lower than where you are, but at the end of the day, they were struggling. They were getting by. They were doing good. They were doing okay. But they're not getting any further, right? And I always tell people, it's not always about you. Because what if what if three of your black belts, if you're good at teaching martial arts, you should have a plethora of black belts. What if, what if uh, three black belts came to you right now and said, I want to make this my career, I don't want to be an engineer. I don't want to be a teacher. I want to do martial arts for a living. Can you hire me? I'd love to work for you and be here. Three of them. And you need to pay them full-time salaries. Can you do it? And the answer for the majority of people is I wouldn't be able to hire them. Well, that stinks. That stinks. And by the way, you two, the reason why we're opening school number three is because we have more people that we need to give opportunities to. That's that's it. Yeah, that's the that's the reason. And, and not everybody can do it. Because if I have a school with 120 students or less or 150 or less, 
or 170 or less making grossing 15,000 and not even be able to take a paycheck and, and collect unemployment to survive. If they came up to you, you couldn't say, well, honey, you know what? Let, let's open a second school. Like you, you, you would have been bankrupt already. Yeah. Right. So, and that's why earlier you said, yes, I put on the brakes when, and with tasks, I put on the brakes when people, when, what happens is you guys, not you guys, but people in general, you get a taste of success. You think you got it all figured out and you're like, you know what? Let's open a second school. Not yet. We're going to do this right. We're going to make sure we have the systems, the bench strength. We're going to do it the right way. And you guys are doing it the right way. And that's what we teach as martial artists, right? Patience. <laughs> yes. So sometimes it's my job to just <clears throat> reel things in a little bit <laughs> and make sure we do it the right way. And not everybody listens, right? And so this is the way you'll provide better opportunities and impact more students. So you started yet 100. So was your max students before Maya, did, was your max amount of students like 170, 175? Yeah, I think yes. our, our highest was like 178. Okay, and, and how what, what, what do you have now? 710 between the two schools, 712, oh, something like that. We just hit over 700. So. so my point is, is when people say, well, I want to make, it's not about money. I want to make a bigger impact in the community. They go hand in hand. I mean, they it do. just goes hand in hand. Now you're impacting over 700 people as opposed to 170 people. Yeah. Yes. And better quality, as you said. Yeah. Lots. <laughs> and you've also, you know, as you guys know, you're getting you're getting a lot of training on how to make instructors better on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. So what's the most amount of people you brought to an elite seminar? Um, we'll be in Orlando in February with 11 or 12 of us. So there will be 11, 11 of us next month or this month, actually. There you go, because you're bringing instructors, you're bringing program directors, yeah. because we want to up the game for everybody. Yeah. Yes. This is not just about the owners, right? And no. I think, I think, uh, yeah, Ms. Fackro here. So that's no even, no even talk directly <laughs> yeah. to members. That's our off. That's our awesome director of operations. Not just you. I mean, at the end of the day, again, our mission: we got to make everybody in the industry and in our Maya family, or the CMA family, or whatever family we're in. Our mission is simple: we're going to make ourselves as successful as possible and if you're part of that it doesn't matter if you're an owner a program director an instructor you're in the boat with us and that's what we want to do so thank you for joining us on the infomercial no problem <laughs> but no you gotta understand you sign up really now will include the slice of the dice <laughs> with New jammy to wash your school mirrors <laughs> just wait uh, there's more you know, listen, guys, it's very inspirational. I mean, even for me, it's so inspirational to hear the stories and hear your story and where you were and be reminded to see your success. And as Tassel said it, we didn't sign you up for Maya and say, hey, by the way, when we start making you more, it'll be 10% of all the extra you make. I mean, I couldn't be you know, more happy. I mean, it is what it is. And, and uh, I think, you know, with our Maya team, um, has the service gone down since you've made 1.25 million or are we there for it whenever you need it? It's been, uh, yeah, you're there. I mean, we call you for the most random things to look at a lease, to talk with our instructors about upgrades. Um, we've had some of your staff up to Utah. I don't, you're, you're always there. So th My, that's what I appreciate the most. I'm saying that just so anybody that's here that may be skeptical about where Maya's heart is, it's really to do everything we possibly can to our best ability, you know, be available. Not you're just one. There's, you know, a bunch, right? Yes. But we try to make ourselves available for everybody as best we can. And, you know, we have a little bit of a team that's there. And, and so because we get joy out of seeing this success. And that's what I would want to convey to anybody who's on the fence or wants to grow. So. Any last thoughts, Tassel? Or I, you know, I, I love I love doing these because when you work with clients for a long period of time, right? Even a short period of time, but over time, you you know this level of success. But sometimes just to sit back and tell the story and go back to where you were to where you are today, um, 
it's it's just fun to kind of go back and reminisce a little bit, right? And it's like when you have your 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 children, you're with your kids all day and you know all day every day, and you don't really see how much they grow, and they're growing the whole time, and we know that. But you know, if we see a picture of them, like oh my gosh, here's where they were, and here's where they are now. It's just always fun to look back at those things. Now, sometimes it's not fun to look back if you're not if you're not a client, as an example, and you're in the same place today as you were five years ago. For you, your own reflection, your own story, the Met said that. It's not fun to look back. It's always fun to look back when you've grown and you're more successful and you know you're still continuing to grow. It makes it fun. So love doing the interviews. Love the success. And, you know, congratulations to you guys um, on the hard work because at the end of the day, the information is useless if it's not put into action. And you guys are the action takers and you guys are the ones on the front lines doing the work and making it happen. And I said it before, there's no bigger compliment than you can give to, to you know, us or consultants, whatever, than actually doing the work. And so congratulations and very, very proud of you guys. It's awesome. You. you know, the last thing I'll, I'll ask, because some people on here, right, that watch this, watch the recording, might think, well, you know what? Okay, so everybody has their three or four, like, people that have had unbelievable success. What would you say of the elite group as far as the people in the elite program? So we've been there for about seven years, and I think everyone in that group has become more successful. Everyone who's stuck with it, yeah. everyone we see there is improving, um, has doubled student counts or opened another location or you know, found the instructors they needed, been able to take a step back from their business. I, I, I don't know of anyone in that group that isn't doing heard, better I haven't heard because any of it. bad at all. Unless there's somebody that just came on, but what do I always ask? especially in the February event or on the Zoom meetings, what do I ask? Who had a record year last year, right? Yeah. <laughs> and what do we see? Tons, tons of people. Yes. Yeah. You know, record, record, record. So what I want to do is bring people like you on the entire year. You know what I mean? Every other week, maybe a different story. Somebody that might resonate with somebody else yeah. because Maya gave us a mission. Maya, by the way, Century Martial Arts is the parent company of Maya. And literally they said to me, Going forward, we see what you guys are doing with the schools. How do we make a bigger impact? Well, be more blatant about what we do, and 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 maybe we can make a bigger impact and get more people. We we were kind of in a way, we were a, a, the best kept secret, I think, maybe in the martial arts industry. I mean, we had ads out there and stuff, but we were never like like this, right? Where we were really trying to sell people on a program, but we're doing it because we know what we can do and maybe more yeah. people will jump, but you know, so now that's our mission. We got to impact more people. So I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to take the same three clients and keep putting them on. Hope, don't, hope that nobody notices. Well, <laughs> glasses and a hat, you know, Miss Collier put the hair up and change and, you know, we'll call them, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Uh, Sanchez. Next. There we go. <laughs> we'll hear their you talk. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for being Thank on. You. Really great, inspirational. Thanks again. And as always, if you need anything, we're here. Thank, Thank you. you. Congrats, guys. Thank you guys Have very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.